Welcome to Megabucks Radio. Conversations with successful entrepreneurs. Sharing their tips and strategies for success. Real world ideas that can put Megabucks in your bank account. Here's your host, Nina Hershberger. Well, hello there and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Nina Hershberger. And today I am honored to have my guest, Extus Justin on the phone. Uh, Extus actually hails originally from St. Lucia down in the Caribbean. You'll kind of hear a little bit about his accent when he starts to talk. Um, but he has been in the U.S. since he was 18 years old. Actually, um, I'm, I, I thank you, Justin, for he spent eight years in the U.S. Marine, so we owe him a lot. Um, I'm going to call him the turnaround king, though. He started uh, his his start back when he came after the Marines was pretty rough. I mean, he was in uh, personal uh, debt. I mean, he went through his savings about thirty thousand dollars, lost seventy thousand in retirement, racked up a, a thirty thousand dollar credit card. So he was he was out one hundred and thirty thousand dollars before he figured it all out. So Extus, welcome to today's show. Hey, thank you so much, Nine. I really appreciate it. So let's start with the backstory. Tell me, I mean, St. Lucia, uh, you know, Caribbean, how did you at 18 get to the U.S.? Let's start there. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's a funny story um, because I was, um, my dad lived in the U.S. as well, too. So he was kind of like away um, for my childhood. Um, And when I was um, 10 years old, was my, was it? Yeah, 10 years old was my actual first experience of moving up to the U.S., um, and I spent two years there with my living with my dad, but it was just like so different because I grew up in St. Lucia in the Caribbean that I just couldn't um, accept t- t- um, telling me like, hey, you have to be back in the house at a certain time or you can't go this place, you can't go that place. So it really wasn't working out for me. So from 10, I spent about two years in there, so about 12 years old. That's when I realized the U.S. It just wasn't my thing because it was just too much restriction. So I think my dad and I had a conversation, and then I went back to the um, the Caribbean. I went back to St. Lucia, and I finished um, high school down there. And when I turned 18, um, I had a conversation with my dad again, and he was asking me, like, now you're going to be graduating. What are you going to do and all these different things? And that's when he, um, I really, because St. Lucia is like a really small island. Um, and that's when I realized, okay, maybe St. Lucia isn't the place I should spend the rest of my life, right? And that's when I decided to um, come back to the um, U.S. and um, stay with my dad in uh, Maryland. And then you joined the U.S. Marines. Yes, yes. So in terms of the U.S. Marines, um, so I moved to the U.S. at 18, and then I lived with my dad. But the with what he wanted me to do because he was more based on you should go to college do these different things and for me it was like oh, i'm not sure if college is really my thing but i signed up anyways so i did one semester in a college and um at the time i had a part-time job uh working in like a, a grocery store um and with college it was pretty expensive as well too so um, I, I started like running out of money um so i was only i only did one semester at first and because i was kind of running out of money I realized I probably need a second job, a part-time job, and I, 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 so the second semester came around. I didn't enroll. I said, okay, I'm just gonna not enroll for the second semester. And I'll just go get a this part-time job, um, just to kind of be able to uh, the following semester to have enough money to pay uh, for college again. And when I was applying for that, sec- that um, second job, I actually got um, the guy. He told me to come in, so I went in. The issue was um, the bus broke down, right? So I'm going to the um, the interview for the part-time job. The bus broke down, and I was like 30 minutes late to the interview. And then when I stepped into the guy's office, he he literally said to me, like, you know, people like you won't amount to shit in life. After I explained to him what happened um, with the bus breaking down, why I'm late, and that happened, and that like it, it frustrated me so much. It's like, what the hell, man? <laughs> like I'm new to the U.S. I'm I'm trying to do the best I can and being having such an experience, it kind of like put a sour taste in my mouth. And I remember walking back to the uh, bus station because um, I didn't have a car at the time, walking back to the bus station. And while I was walking, um, this guy, he's like, I like to say he's like six foot 13, <laughs> but he was just this really tall guy. He had on this uh, khaki shirt, this um, blue trousers with like a red stripe going down the side uh, and some black shoes and this, um, this uh, what do you call it? Um, he, he had this folder in his hand and he was walking towards me and I was like, we're crossing paths. And as soon as I got like right next to him, he said, Hey young man, can I talk to you for a second? 
and we started talking and next thing you know um he's asking me about my story where i'm from what i'm doing all these different types of things i'm like who, who is this guy but i just answer these questions anyways and i kind of told him what my like my story which is um I moved to the U.S. I tried to go to college, but I ran out of money. Um, I just tried, got back from a job interview where I got fired before I even got a job and then saying all that stuff. And he, he, when I said this stuff, I thought he'd like be like feeling sorry for me or something. But he's every time I told him one of my problems, like, hey, I um, I ran out of money for college. Like there was a smirk, a smirk on his face, and I got fired. And the, the smirk kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, why is this guy like? What's going on? But as it turns out. Um, I was a perfect candidate to join the U.S. Marines, right? <laughs> because everything I shared with him um, was like a benefit, which is, hey, I ran out of money for college. And he was like, well, you know, in the U.S. Marines, um, you get your college tuition paid for, right? And I was like, hmm, interesting. And I was like, I got fired. He's like, well, you know, you can't get fired, right? And he started telling me all the benefits. And then I was like, next thing you know, I'm being put on the bus and headed off to Paris Island <laughs> for three months of hell. And that's how my, my Marine Corps journey started. Okay, so the so the, the fast forward because we'll get there. I want everybody to know that you have built uh, average of four hundred fifty thousand dollars per month online coaching and consulting business. So um, what was there in the marine? I mean, so we're going to hear how you got there because there's a turnaround king. But what what did you do in the marines that prepared you for this online coaching and consulting? Anything, or was it just the discipline. Um, I think the discipline, because with the Marines, um, it's one of those places where I teach it. The one of the things I teach you is to, you, you can't quit, right? I think I was having that conversation with my brother um, <clears throat> a couple of days ago, and that's that's one of the things where the it's rigged for you to win, but it's also rigged in a way that you can't quit. Um, if you really determine, if you really want it, it's meant for you not to fail. And even if you did, they were going to keep, do everything in the power to keep you on track, to keep you to succeed. So I guess for me, the things that, that was one thing, which is, again, a discipline to when things get hard, when things get tough, is to not run away and not try to look for the shortcut, not try to really run away from things and face the, the, the hard things. That's the first thing. And in essence, um, when I was in the Marines as well, so I that, that was like kind of like my first um, experience with personal development, personal growth, right, which is... Like you could become better, right? You could be who you are today, but you could become a better version of yourself. And I think I the story I like to tell about this one was um I remember um riding in when I was in Japan, riding with my my gunnery sergeant at the time, and um he was listening to, when I when I first got into this car, he was listening to some guy speak, and it was like the weirdest thing I've ever heard, which is like how do you listen to someone speak? Typically with my friends, we got in the car and we listen to music, but he was like listen to someone speak. But the thing is, he was getting promoted so fast, and I kind of said, and that's when I approached, like, what are you doing? Like, what's what's going on? And that's when he kind of introduced me to, like, personal growth. And I think that the tape he was listening to was Brian Tracy, Eat That Frog. But he kind of gave me that tape, and that's really what I, I just got hooked on, that type of stuff, which is the whole personal development, self-improvement. So I did a lot of that um, for my the eight years I was in the U.S. Marines. I spent a lot of time in, on, on personal development. Okay, all right, that makes sense. So then you leave the Marines. Mm-hmm. And now you do you have a college degree by that time? Did you did you get? Oh it? no no that, no no that's one of the things I realized, uh, and that's one of my fears for leaving because I realized I didn't have any college degrees, no certifications or anything like that. So so you did not get to college, but those of us who are entrepreneurs often understand that the college degree is actually a, a hindrance um, because it you know what it does is it you know you can sit in a classroom and. You know, for four hours, have your butt in a seat, but it's, you're not doing something. So you leave mm-hmm. the Marines, and mm-hmm. um, now you got to figure out what are you going to do. So by that time, did you have the entrepreneurial bug? Did you did you did not want to work for somebody, or did you go to work for somebody at that point? Oh no, no, I I knew I couldn't work for anyone else because, um, and that's one of the reasons. Because my goal, actually, my goal wasn't really to become an entrepreneur. I guess you could say um, it was. I wanted to be like do 20 years in the U.S. Marines, but um. I remember um, the incident that kind of made me realize that the Marines probably won't be my the thing I do for the rest of my life was um, in Japan. I was um, always on like a I think it's like a, a 15k hike and stuff, getting ready for shipping off to um, Iraq. And while on that hike, um, I had a 70 pound pack on my back and uh, my weapon Kevlar flag jackets, and that's when my knee kind of gave out. 
And ever since then, I kept having knee issues, and that's when I just realized, okay, my body's kind of like gotten to the point where it's it's ha- the, the the physical activity had its toll, and that's when I realized, okay, what am I gonna do? And I knew that I couldn't work for anyone else, just the free the the travel, the freedom, all these different things within the Marines. I was like, I'm not going to work for anyone else. And that's kind of what drove me into saying, what can I do? And that's when I got, got into the seeing how others were using advice, consulting, coaching um, to to build businesses, to make money online. And that's really what got me on path to say, that's really what I want to do. Okay. Is there somebody in the online coaching consulting business that was your mentor then that, that you followed? Or did you try mm-hmm. to figure this all out yourself? Oh, man, I listened to so many mentors because that's what personal development did because personal development kind of brought me into marketing. Um, it's kind of like the, the bridge, I guess you could say. Um, so I listened to so many of them. Even before I had my business, um, there was the um, the uh, Ben Kennedy. <laughs> he's, he's definitely one of my uh, favorites. Um, yeah, Jeff Walker's, um, the Frank Kearns, all these guys. I was just like consuming this stuff. Um, but the thing is, I wasn't doing anything. So those were kind of like my first um, few mentors, Evan Pagan, those guys were my first few minutes. I kind of saw how they were doing that stuff. So, yeah. So what you what you were doing is you were learning, you were listening, you were setting your mind up for success, but you weren't taking action at that point. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. So that's how you lost 30000 in personal savings and 70000 in retirement and racked <laughs> up all that credit card debt because you were going to – all of the events, you were buying all the stuff, you were doing all that stuff, but nothing was happening. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happened? What was the turnaround? What what, what was the key? Uh huh. So I would say the biggest key is learning the, the learning how the business works, right? So just like with my story, um, yeah. So after I left the U.S. Marines, um, moved to California, got a nice apartment, nice car, um, and doing everything I thought. I was supposed to, to do, which is, again, um, whether it's buying the programs, um, creating the lead magnets, doing all these different things, because there, there came a point. So with my action, with me not taking action, that was while I was in the U.S. Marines because I was listening to all these programs in there. But when I got out, um, that's when I realized I had to do something, right? I had to take the action. But the thing is, I, I really didn't understand what what model, because I realized this coaching, because there's a lot of different models, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing at the time. I was just like, buying program after program, going to events and all these different things. But I had no idea what this business was. And I guess the biggest shift I could say um, was learning that at the end of the day, if you're going to do coaching and consulting, especially the high ticket coaching and consulting, the main goal is having some type of system to take strangers from the internet to have them be able to schedule calls with you in the quickest time frame possible um, and being able to do that consistently. Because I tried a lot of different um, um, to, like processes. I tried the membership, uh, like creating like a membership site and creating like um, doing a mastermind and selling a, a product and doing all these different things. And it kind of worked, but nothing worked. More money was going out faster than it was coming in. And it wasn't until I figured out, um, again, like I, my, cause with my model, the way we're generating our income is through group coaching, um, high ticket group coaching, where what we do is we basically have consultations with people. We have them schedule consultations through a specific uh, process, and then through the consultations, we enroll them into our high-ticket programs. Okay, so it's coaching. Is it, are you coaching business people, or are you coaching for mindset, or, or what do you coach for? Mm-hmm. So we coach, um, so for myself, I'm a marketing coach, and what I do is I help um, other coaches, like the life coaches, the um what they call them, the the career coaches, the personal development coaches, we show them how to get clients online. Okay. Yeah. And so, so we, yeah, the course, so I guess really two things, really. So we show them, number one, how to take their knowledge and pack it up into an online coaching program. So ultimately, how to shift from the one-on-one model, because most coaches and consultants, um, what they do is they just go out and um, work with individuals one by one by one by one. So all we do is we show them how to take that knowledge that they're using in the one-on-one setting and create like an online coaching program, a group coaching program with it. And then once they have the group coaching program, then we show them how to build the inbound marketing systems to get consistent uh, clients uh, to that uh, program. So that way when they take on more clients, they're not taking on any more additional work, just like with the one-on-one coaching. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Now you said 
So who is your, your best ideal person to be in this? You talked about life coaches. So mm-hmm. life coaches to me means uh, working on my, you know, crap that's in my mind or something and getting me out of that kind of thing, as opposed mm-hmm. to a coach who's working with that chiropractor in the local area to get him more business. Uh, I mean, who, who is the person that you work with the most? Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's kind of like both of them because some of them, um, just like with, um, and that's what I realized, and that's something I didn't understand at first, which is with coaching consultants, there's different models, right? So there's one-on-one coaching, there's group coaching, there's membership sites, there's masterminds, there's done-for-you services. There's all of these different types. Like I, I had no idea and I couldn't differentiate. And what we find is that the types of individuals, the types of coaches who come to us, um, they're, the, they're, the, they're the, those two types. One who does, does a done-for-you services because with the done-for-you, when they come to us, we help them shift away from the done-for-you and move more into like programs. And for that individual, they have to kind of change who they market to. Now they want to keep, um, because um, we do have individuals who do want to apply to work with us in our programs, and we typically, they're typically not a good fit, which is someone who says, yeah, I want to continue doing a done-for-you type of service um, for uh, my clients. I want to do maybe say, um, I want to work with chiropractors or dentists or something, and I want to do maybe lumpy mail and those different types of things. Although we have techniques to help them, but we, those typically, that, that's really not our model. Like we'd say, well, it's probably not a good fit because you wanted to do, you, you're doing the work, right? Versus the individuals we who are typically attracted to us are the ones who they've been doing the work and they've been like um, creating the funnels or doing the marketing and run the and doing all these things for the clients where they're trading the time for money and they want to get more into saying, okay, how do I get to where I could coach to say, I've, I've learned all these skills. I have all of this um, stuff in my head. How do how do I kind of package this up into a, a, a process to where now I could more deliver coaching consultant advice versus having to actually do the work? So that's it. That's that side for the um, the individuals who maybe work with chiropractors, dentists, um, lawyers, and those different types of in, individuals. Now on the second front, the the life coaches, um, the business coaches, those different types of individuals who already do have some type of advice. Um, for those, we, those are really um, they were attracted to us, and really what we help them do as well too is just because the core thing is just figuring out who you're going to sell to, like what's your audience. Just like one of my clients, um, he works with um, he started off just as a generic life coach in a sense, right? But he we helped him specialize because with life coaching, it's definitely a hard thing to sell. But once you're able to specialize, find your niche, like the client he he is now doing. Um, working with some individuals who, um, and helping them overcome stuttering and panic attacks. And just this month, he's hit $25,000 per month in his business, and it's only growing because now he's working, he's hiring a, a team, coaches, different people to help him grow this thing. Um, another one of our clients, Amanda, she's more like um, she niched down into helping people find jobs. Another client, he niched down into helping people overcome stuttering. So it's basically taking these um, types of individuals who the, the coaches, the ones who already do the advice, but showing them how to more niche themselves into a specific type of industry to be that coach in there. So, Exus, I want to stop here a second because $25,000 a month. We're recording mm-hmm. this in May of 2020. We're mm-hmm. recording this when, you know, there are 30 million people out of jobs. We're recording mm-hmm. this when businesses are closing all over because of the pandemic. So are you telling me that somebody is still being that successful in this kind of environment based on what it is you're teaching them? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Because at the end of the day, um, really with what's going on, with everything with COVID-19 right now, because I I believe that um, individuals like we have, like individuals, like problems don't go away just because COVID-19 hits. um, Individuals still have, there's still problems that, they're living, right? Just like with someone who has anxiety or, or some type of issue, just because of COVID-19 hit doesn't mean that their problem went away. It, it's still there. Now it's just that they are now on the internet and they're looking for the solution. They're still out there looking for, how do I fix my, my personal problem? And that's, so I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely have a lot of clients still making a lot of money right now, even regardless of what's happening right now. So probably even better because if they're looking online, they got the time, A, eh? They're yeah. looking online, which is what you're teaching those people that funnel online into your group coaching program. Um, so, that, yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. I want to go back to a question, though. You talked about the done-for-you people. One of the things you threw out there was lumpy mail. So let's mm-hmm. say that you had a person who had been teaching, who had been doing the done-for-you. 
So they work with the dentist. And they worked with them to create a, a direct mail campaign and stuff. So now they're going to segue into just coaching that dentist and saying, you've got to send out direct mail. I'm not going to do it for you. Does that coach actually then develop a resource of people that can do that done for you? Or are they expecting that dentist, that chiropractor, that whatever, to actually <laughs> learn the skills to do that stuff? Yeah. Now it, it depends. Now, and that's that's a place where a lot of people get it wrong, right? Because uh, most individuals, let's say someone is doing done for you, like for a dentist or something. Um, the issue becomes that, um, and I see it so often, which is someone says, well, I'm really good at doing the done for you for dentists. Now, you know, I want to get into consulting or coaching them. I'll now show them how to do it. And the thing I always say is like, hey, it de- like it, 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 it kind of depends on what market, but that market, I, I don't believe that that's the way because the biggest thing with dentists, um, chiropractic, is like they they don't have the time. They already they already got so much else going on that they need someone. They 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 want someone to do it for them. Versus, I typically recommend when someone make want to get make the shift into coaching and consultant. Sometimes the niche who they serve has to change. It cannot be. Well, I'm helping dentists um, with lumpy mail and I'm doing it for them. And now I w- I'm going to say, you know, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I'm going to try to sell them a course or sell them a way to do it themselves because that'll be one of those places where it's like, that's not what they want, right? It doesn't solve their core problem, which is they've already got so much else going on and they need that additional person to be able to handle that for them. So in those instances, um, I typically, and that's what my team and I really do, we make sure that um, when someone, whatever idea someone has to where they want to build a coaching consulting business, we basically show them like, hey, hey, let's let's do the research. Let's make sure that what we are going to create around is is going to serve that audience. If it doesn't, um, then we might have to change audiences, change who you're marketing to. So, in other words, they're not developing a group of resources to get those things done. You're suggesting that perhaps instead of working with the dentist who doesn't have the time and who needs somebody to do it, that maybe they work with. I, you know, I don't know, some other niche, even though they weren't experienced in that niche. Well, not really not experienced because they are, for example, let's say someone te- someone um, builds a business, right? So let's say they were helping dentists, they do lumpy mail, they're helping dentists, and they've gotten up to a place where let's say they're generating about maybe $20,000 per month helping dentists um, with lumpy mail. So for me, that what the, the what they're doing there, there's this technique, there's something that they've mastered to be able to generate twenty thousand dollars per month, and what that tells me is that hey, that process, that system you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing to generate your twenty thousand dollars, however you're helping them, whether it's a lumpy mail, doing this thing, doing that thing, that's the core of what people will pay for. If you're gonna switch niches, that's the core of that thing. So in essence, it's saying, well, you've mastered your skill, right? You have, you've, if I came to you and I said, hey, what are you doing to make money? How are you making money? You could say, hey, X, here's what I do. I kind of um, do this for dentists. I go here, I create a love email package. I do this, I do that, do this, and I send it out and boom, they, they pay me this much per month. So I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. Can you show me that? Because I mean, I'm working this job and I'm doing this thing I really don't like. And you showed me how you've built a business being an entrepreneur doing this thing. That's some cool stuff. Can you help me do this? And then you could say, yeah, I mean, I'm working with dentists right now, but sure, I could teach you a few things. Yeah, I'll show you a few what I do. So in essence, um, the reason I say this is because um, just to show you that the switch is typically based on, okay, instead of you going out and selling to dentists, how about you go f- go show other people how you do what you do, how you um, built a business helping dentists, and maybe help them do that, help them figure out how they could do something similar. That makes perfect sense. Uh, how long, so, so okay, so they've transitioned into this coaching and consulting part. How long do their clients stay with them generally? How long in this group coaching? I mean, mm-hmm. is, it a, is, is it forever, ever, or is it a certain mm-hmm. length of time? Yeah, so we typically, with the group coaching, it's typically forever, meaning that's, um, and that's a big mistake a lot of people make who do want to get into group coaching, um, because it's the way group coaching typically um, is sold is um, through maybe a, a, a program, right? So it's uh um, let me see, maybe an eight-week program or a 12-week program or something. And the big mistake I see most individuals make is that they would sell the or someone an eight-week program, a 12-week program, and then at the end, it's like everything stops, right? So it's like, okay, you guys have graduated. I'll see you guys later. And either the student gets pushed to the curb or they get left or out on their own. And I find that with, with especially with what we do, because there's so much advice, so many, I, like it's it's pretty easy to get 
overwhelmed, confused, and all these different things online just because there's so much information. Um, our model is a little bit different. What we advise our clients to do is say, hey, put this program together um, and make sure, and we sell the high ticket programs as well too. So we teach our clients, like my anxiety, the client who's um, helping people overcome anxiety, um, he's selling a $3,000 um, eight week um, group coaching program. So $3,000 per person. So in essence, we have them in essence um, as far as, um, oh goodness, I kind of lost my train of thought here. Um, point me back, um, um, Nina, what, what's... Um, yeah, so so you just talked about an eight week program, but we also talked about a forever program. Keep it you don't stop. You don't say okay, you graduated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in essence, so the eight week program, because with what um what I typically like to have my clients do is say, Hey, let's focus on the end transformation, right? So let's say my client, um Sean, he has his um eight week program where he basically helps individuals overcome anxiety, right? So with that program, the core of it is saying, Hey, within when eight weeks hits, it's not you don't kick the students out. You you keep them in there for the life of that specific program because we, the way we typically teach them how to create programs is we have to figure out point A and point B, like what's the transformation, like what's the end result that someone gets um, sense again, and although we might market the program as a, um, just an eight-week program or a six-week program, it's more based on we're going to be doing um, group calls with them, and I typically like to say that group calls should be like for life in a sense, mean that um, you want to show up whether it's once a week or whether it's once every couple of weeks, but you want to keep providing that support because most of our programs, they're not like um, the launch-based model. And with the launch-based model is where you um, you 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 spend a few a couple of months, you build out the, pro- the product, you build out the follow-up series, you do all the email marketing and all these different things, you get everything ready, and then you get joint venture partners and you launch it, and then um, you generate a, a large sum of money, but then you're not market you're not doing yeah. anything else until the next launch then right? you don't have any yeah you, you yeah, go down yeah. Stuff. yeah 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 so the group coaching is more based on we build the online program um we um make sure we know when we do our group coaching calls and then we um we build the evergreen funnel so we could always keep running people into our program getting them signed up into our group coaching program but the core of it is saying we want to keep the students in there as long as possible for our transformation because number one we want to make sure they get the results whatever results we promise, we want to make sure they get the results. And with us keeping them there longer, because as you and I know, when it comes to getting results, there's no type of guarantee that within six weeks, within eight weeks, everyone will get results. Some people will, some people won't. Some people will take them a little bit longer. So it would make sense to stick with the clients for as long as it takes them to get the results, because at the end of the day, we want to build our business. I believe that the best way to build a coaching and consultant business is the, the one way is to sing about your praise and how great you are. But the second is to think about your clients, um, give your clients um, the platform, which is talk about their success, how they don't have them share their stories with everyone else. Because at the end of the day, the most powerful form of marketing is someone else saying, hey, this thing has worked for me, and here's where I was at when I was first getting started, and here's where I'm at now. Um, and that's what the, um, when we say work with them for life, it means that, hey, keep um, them in there because most of your, what you want your business to be is like every client that comes in, you want to get some type of case study of like a success story and you can't if you if you just say hey i'll only work with you for a certain period of time that probably isn't the case you probably won't get that many versus if you say that how do i engineer this process so that it's a um experience to where my clients based on this transformation like with sean helping them they come in with anxiety panic attacks they're afraid to drive over a bridge doing all these different things they leave as this confident person to where they just feel like hey what was what this panic attack things like that's not me anymore but they have that transformation <clears throat> and now every client who comes into this program he's able to say hey here's where they start off here's where they went this person took them to, um, it took them a, a week but this person took them five months or six months but just because we set the structure to where as long as they're in there they're always going to get that support to keep getting up to the next level so how does this differ from a mastermind? So if if you're group coaching, it could be a you could be a hundred people, I suppose. Does that coach just talk the entire time? You know, in a um, mastermind, generally there's a back and forth kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So with the group coaching, now the core of what we teach is saying um, what's the tra- like what's the journey, right? So point A to point B, that's the biggest thing. Just like with Sean. Um, when we helped him put together his group coaching program, because he started from the one-on-one, when he helped him put together his group coaching program, and when I was helping him, I said, okay, hey, what's the transformation, right? So we know they come in with anxiety, panic attacks, all these different things. How do they overcome it? Like, what's the five steps? What's the six, what's the seven step, or what maybe the eight step process they have to go through? What's the big chunks? 
and then he sort of outlined them. Well, they need to know, understand, number one um, is why is it that way in the first place. Then the second thing is they need to be aware of this thing. Then the third thing is da da da. And he he lists out the, the the full like eight steps of what they would need to do. And then what we did, we said, okay, that's a high level overview of it. I mean, we could have we we had it on one page, and that thing is that one page we could give to someone um, and say, hey, this is a solution to overcome anxiety, and we would give it to them. But for them, and we we would know that that's the solution. And for them, they would be like, that's pretty cool, but that's kind of useless because it doesn't tell, it doesn't give me the details. I need the details. I need to give me the step by step actual thing. Right now, for them, it's like coding because the the person who wrote it down, that's the only person who knows what it is. And that's where the group coaching program. So the group coaching program comes from the premise of, hey, whatever your transformation is, whether you're helping people overcome stuttering, whether you're helping them find a job, there's some five, six, seven, eight step process or whatever in there that the person would need to go through. And our job is to take that out of our head and get that into modulized chunks, which is whatever way it takes to best describe that 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 first step, second step, third step, whether it's through video, um, audio, text, pictures, whatever we need to do, PDFs, checklists, to make, get, give someone a, an experience of saying, hey, I could take this, I could do it on my own. So that's where the group coaching program is. So it's ultimately us taking the bulk of how it's going to help our clients' results and patching them into a, a program. And then the group calls is more based on us just filling in the gaps for for the clients. Um, because most of the, the and that's where the, the group calls where the, the purpose is really to keep the clients on track because I found that with online marketing, the biggest issue with people buying courses and all these different things is that the support system, the processes, the the hey, you could do this, hey, let's show up every single day. I'm I'm here showing up with you. It's hard, it's gonna be difficult, it's it's not gonna always go go um the way you planned. Um let's but let's keep going anyways. So a group coaching course is more based on direction, which is saying, hey, let's keep at this. I know it's hard. I know you're going to, there's excuses. You're going to complain. You're going to not want to do it, but I'll be here with you and we're going to do this together. So yeah, so in essence, a group course is not about um, just talking the whole time. It's just saying, hey, the clients, we know they have all of the best trains. We know we've kind of laid everything out for them. Now, as we show for these calls, let's see what the issues are. And someone might come on the call and say, well, I'm, I, you know, I, I just don't believe. Uh, and then we might go into a little bit of just a bit of mindset coaching, like, hey, do this thing or that thing or whatever. And someone else might say, well, you know, I tried this one thing. It didn't really work. And we might give a little tweak or something, but just to kind of support them in, on that journey. Does that make sense? That, that makes perfect sense. So can anybody be a coach? I mean, there's everybody's got some sort of skill, some sort of expertise. So, I mean, would you say anybody could be a coach, start a business like this? Um, I believe anybody could do it. The only difference is some people do it profitably and some people don't. I uh, mean that there's a lot, and that's that's where I can, that's the kind of gap I fill in because most individuals, um, before I was before I before I came into the marketplace and long after I'm gonna leave, they're still gonna just realize that because all for me all coaching is it's saying you have some advice that you could help someone in some way. Um, that they can't help themselves. You have some information that that you have some information that they would need to be able to get a result. And so for me, it's like every I believe we all have information. Just like I know Nina, if you've been doing your um your show, this interview show, um you have advice. You could basically if, if I said I want to start a show, how how do I do this? Um for you being able to share your advice with me, I, that would be really valuable to me, right? But there's some individuals um that that's the biggest place where they get caught up is in they're not sure what advice people will pay their money for. And most of them, they're right, because again, most of them get into coaching and consultant and they're doing it in a place where, well, the thing you're doing it on right now, you probably won't get paid for it. But if you do find a way, because I definitely believe that we all have a way that if we find the, the thing we're good at, the thing we're passionate about, and we figure out a way to connect it up with what people need, um, anybody could do this. Well, and you know, a lot of people I've heard say, well, you know, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it just to help people and stuff. It's almost like they they don't want to get the money. It's like really, <laughs> like, yeah. like that. I mean, you're, you're making four hundred fifty thousand dollars a month on average. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, listen. I am looking at the time, and we are running out of it. So, Exodus, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, if they want to learn more about your coaching program, um, where do you want them to go? Mm-hmm. Um, so they could just check me out on uh, social media. I'm pretty active on there. Um, I have a private Facebook group called High Ticket Client Attraction Inside a Circle. 
and we just got up to like 6,000 uh, members. But my sole vision for that community um, is to bring together individuals who are serious about getting started with coaching and consulting uh, businesses and also be creating like a support resource because I find that there's so much, um, everyone is trying to just sell, 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 and no one is building a, a place where people could get value and be able to say, hey, you know, I, I'm considering doing this. Where do I kind of, where do I start? How do I get started with this thing? So that was my vision for putting that community together. Again, it's called High Ticket Client Attraction Insider Circle. And we have about 6,000 um, high ticket coaches and consultants in there. And they're all like supporting each other on their journey. So I would say if someone wanted to connect, um, I'm a part of that. Um, I run that community. Um, and um, I would definitely have, I would love them to come join. So that's that first thing. And the second thing is um, I do um, a webinar because a lot of the members of the community also ask me, like, how are you doing this? Like, what is your model? How exactly does it work? And similar to how I mentioned, um, Lina, where I kind of help individuals break what they do into like a seven-step process, six-step, eight-step process or whatever. So I, I do uh, the live webinar for the community where I just show them my six-step process, really cut them like down to the um, T. And that train, I know most people put fluff in there. My training probably lasts about maybe 25 minutes. I'll show you the whole thing in 25 minutes. So you can basically take it and, and you model it, do whatever you want with it. But if someone wanted to just know directly, hey, what is he doing? Um, they could come in, join the community, and they'll most likely find a link to uh, attend one of those um, live webinars. Okay, so now you are a fast talker. <laughs> so slow mm-hmm. down and tell us the name of that group again. Okay, okay. <laughs> the the group is um, called High Ticket Client Attraction Insider Circle. High Ticket Client Attraction Insider Circle. Right. All right. And let me spell your name because it's a bit unusual. Uh, it's E X T U S. That's your first name. X does Justin J U S T I N. That's normal. So, X does. What an honor it was to have you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you've done. It's it was truly my my honor to have you. Appreciate it, Nina. Thank you so much, and it was my pleasure as well to be here. Thank you. So until next time, this is Nina Hirschberger. Remember, every single one of you listening to this have a coaching business inside you. So go to High Ticket Client Attraction Inner Circle and learn more about Extus and how you can do that. Thank you for listening to Megabucks Radio with Nina Hirschberger. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or to listen to past episodes, visit megabucksradio.com.